My 2014 Audi R8 has been on quite the journey recently. We started out with a total R8 that I found at Salvage Auction, added a whole bunch of parts from my partner on this project, eBay Motors, and then several hours of labor later, we ended up with a halfway presentable car. Just because this project is nearing completion, that doesn't mean that we're anywhere near finished with it. Everyone knows that a project isn't fully complete until it's been thoroughly tested. <laughs> To start though, we're up here to see our friends at A-Plus Auto Styling. We're gonna have some fun with a temporary livery on this car as a special thank you to my partner on this project, eBay Motors. If you're a car enthusiast and you're not shopping on eBay Motors by now, you're just plain crazy. With more than 122 million parts and accessories listings, you'll be able to find exactly what you need on eBay Motors, just like I did for my R8. Use the My Garage feature to enter your vehicle and eBay's guaranteed fit will show you listings that are known to match your vehicle. If for some reason there's an issue, you protect it with eBay's money back guarantee Plus, there's fantastic sellers like us here at Lisey Parts. It's been a top-rated seller on eBay Motors for more than a decade. I absolutely love how this turned out. I had a vision for this car. The team up here at A-Plus Auto Styling was able to knock it out of the park. We changed the plan just a little bit, mainly on the roof and the hood, but I think it was definitely for the better as the end result is absolutely awesome. I can't stop smiling about this thing, but we have no time to stand around and admire it. So we got racing to do this weekend up at Pocono Raceway with the Race Motive crew. We still have to do a couple small things, put the under trays on, the fender liners, some of the engine compartment stuff, under hood compartment that we were waiting for the wrap job to finish up before we went ahead and completed this thing 100%. But we need to do that, get this thing ready for races. <laughs> it is time to go racing and it is cold up here that's going to be the only issue 46 degrees cold so we are first out on the track we're going to go ahead and do kind of a shakedown pass if everything goes smoothly then we'll just keep laying into it but there's a chance maybe we have some traction issues i don't know this car at all i have no seat time in it so we're going to see how this goes and then later today we're going to try and line up with as many different cars as we can see how fast this thing actually is not too bad i my goal was to get in 150 and uh we did that hopefully we can get a little bit higher but we got where we wanted to be so. out one of the good ones first thing in the video here my brother alex has the yellow 997 turbo lee did a rebuild series on the channel here earlier in the year and then alex and i put upgraded turbos from aim performance on it very very recently car made just over 700 horsepower right now it is on a just under 700 horsepower map we're going to see how it matches up against the r8 we got a lot riding on the line here there's a, the crap talking points and then also lunch so fingers crossed we get the victory
got a good race. It was so close. I, I couldn't quite see, but I thought you were like right on that corner. It was right. So you jumped out right off the hit. I don't know if like we went at the same time and you jumped just because the car is quicker out yeah. or if I hit it right after you. But it was literally like side by side. Like locked in the Like whole locked way down. in side by side. When the shifts, you, you were shifting good, but you could definitely see on the shifts I was in. Yeah, so it was a good race though. Together. Thanks. After my crushing defeat and very expensive launch, I wanted to go out and see what this thing did on the draggy. 60 to 130 is primarily what I was focusing on, but we also got the 100 to 150 number. 729, I think, was the 60 to 130, which is, you know, nothing overly impressive. We just did it with Alex's in much warmer air, and the DA was completely different, and his went just a tad bit slower than that. Up here, I'm guessing that they'd probably be really, really close to the same as you saw in that race. The cars were really, really close together. Now, the 100 to 150 number is basically almost the same as the 60 to 130. And what that tells you is that the car, that's where you see the supercharger, essentially the inefficiency of the supercharger. Your turbo cars will normally go much faster, 100 to 150 than they will 60 to 130. So this thing down low is absolutely fantastic. I couldn't ask for anything more. I'm gonna try and match up with a couple other cars that you will be able to identify with here. And we're gonna get kind of a good baseline comparison of exactly where this thing stands in the grand scheme of things. Absolutely rolls. You gotta, yeah, was, tell me about the setup. This is beautiful too. Let's hear. What did I just get whooped by? Uh, 240 SX with a RB25 swap. Okay. How much power does it make? Uh, turned up on like 35 pounds and made over 800. About the motor. Is it stock motor? No, no, no. We just did a 159 and a half, I think. 159 and a half. They told me it went 152. So just know that ahead of time. <laughs> Well, we've but we've turned it up a little bit. But look, this is absolutely beautiful. Full race manifold down there, Garrett Turbo. Everything is wrinkle coated. Absolutely beautiful under the hood as well to match the outside of the car. Just got back out on track. We had some rain that moved into the area and unfortunately a lot of people left as you would expect. So I wasn't able to really line up a bunch of races in the pits like I usually like to try and do. I made a pass with uh, one of the owners of the Race Motive event crew here, Sumit, in his 800 horsepower Porsche that he told me was a 700 horsepower Porsche. Now that race was barely video worthy. So we just lined up in the staging lanes. We're gonna see what we line up against. Hopefully it's a good race. And then afterwards, we'll see if I can find them and we'll figure out how much power the car makes that we were either winning or losing against.
had an absolute blast up at Race Motive at Pocono Raceway, as we always do. The weather didn't necessarily cooperate too much, but hey, that's how it goes being on top of Pocono Mountain in October. The car, though, performed absolutely fantastic. The fastest pass of the day was 150 miles an hour. I think our slowest pass of the day was right about 148 miles an hour, and we did like six or seven passes. So to be within a two mile an hour window on every single pass shows that this thing is just right where it needs to be as far as consistency goes and therefore i'm going to consider the high speed test portion of the video a big win we definitely don't have any time to stand around and celebrate though because the next test for this thing is right around the corner i told you all this is a street car for me i plan on driving this regularly and i plan on putting a lot of miles on it to be completely honest so i figured what better way to test it for that scenario than to do a little road endurance test and there's no better place to go for that and one of the biggest endurance races in the U.S. an absolutely amazing experience it is being here this is truly a bucket list event for any race enthusiast or just car enthusiast in general road atlanta here in georgia this track is set up for watching racing there are so many incredible spots viewpoints out here really this is just incredibly special to be here seeing some of these cars in action that i've wanted to see for a very very long time now special the drive down was not yesterday we were in the car for about 12 hours something like over 600 miles but the r8 did not miss a beat not one step stop and go traffic cruising at speed it was great all throughout there's a couple little things that i've noticed from driving the car a little bit over the past week we'll address them a little bit later in the video. For now, I'm going to enjoy a little bit more of this racing. The endurance race here is what prompted our endurance road test down here with the R8, but it also inspires our next test. We can't get out on track here and we couldn't compete even if we wanted to, but there is a stretch of road just a little bit to the north of here that's going to allow us to put the R8 through the twisties and get a test out of that.
back at the Dragon almost a year ago to the day that we were here with the eBay Motors Parts of America tour and man I absolutely love being back here just the the cars the bikes the people it's such a special location I'm standing outside the world famous tale of the Dragon the Killboy souvenir shop you can find his photos online hopefully they'll get some of the R8 as we're running back through the weather it didn't really cooperate with us but it doesn't have to be perfect to be special. I couldn't help but think that as I was running through the Dragon at sunrise with the fog in the rain, it is what I imagine it would be like to come through the night at the 24 hours of Le Mans. So just a, a cool, special experience that I'll probably never get. So the next best thing is doing what we're doing right here. I'm gonna go ahead and make one more run up the Dragon and then it's gonna be time to head back to Maryland and we'll see what's in store next for the R8. After a whole nother day in the car, we are finally back home and I couldn't really ask for a whole lot more from this car. You would never know that it was a totaled car. I guess technically it still is because we haven't done the salvage inspection, but I spent something like 30 hours in this car over the past three days and it performed absolutely flawlessly. My back is a little bit sore even with those OEM seats that are definitely more comfortable than those wing backs, but I have no complaints about taking this car straight from the salvage auction lot, fixing it with some parts from eBay Motors and then taking it on a three day road trip for more than 1400 miles. Now today we're up at Audi of Wilmington. I'm knocking a couple little things off of the list that are part of the rebuild process. I had to get another set of keys programmed for this car because it only came with one and we're hoping to clear the airbag light. It's looking good to start with here. The only code that it's showing in the system is for a passenger front impact sensor, which had a broken connector. Luckily, it didn't trigger all the airbags as we discussed in the earlier videos, but I was worried it was the seatbelt pretensioners. It doesn't look like that's what it is, so hopefully it's gonna clear right up for us. We're gonna find out here in a minute though, and then we're gonna get some fresh oil in this thing since I just put that 1,400 miles on it and it was already due for an oil change. have to turn the ignition on we no longer have that airbag light i am ecstatic i've been thinking about that airbag light for no joke months pretty much since i got the car because if it was seatbelt pretensioners they are in horrible locations behind the seats behind a bunch of panels behind a bunch of electronics i didn't want to go through that trouble now i don't have to they got everything squared away up here and now i get to enjoy my ride home 
We're going to switch gears a little bit. Before we do the grand finale, we're going to talk about a couple of the negative things that I have found about the car. Nothing massively concerning, but stuff that's going to keep me busy over the winter with a couple minor changes on this car. The first thing is that the car that the doors came from was PPF. The rest of the front end is not. Now, that wouldn't be an issue, except this is older PPF. The color is yellowing just a little bit, and it may be hard to tell some of the other pictures images throughout the video you maybe have seen it but this PPF is gonna have to come off and generally speaking old PPF can be difficult to get off so when we've had our fun with the eBay Motors livery and we go through the effort of taking all that off we're gonna have to take the PPF off the doors as well and then figure out what I want to do as far as protecting the front end and the rest of the car now the other two negatives both center around the suspension this thing is low and it's basically too low Rain kept us from really pushing this thing on the Dragon, but I don't know that we would have been able to anyway, because in those aggressive turns, this thing, it just was scraping. It sounded absolutely awful. So I was able to kind of drive through, find like kind of the sweet spot where if you would get into some of those turns, give it some light acceleration, it would kind of take the load off of the corner that was loading up and causing the rubbing. But definitely an issue for a car that I plan on driving. This thing isn't just some show car. It's going to be sitting in a parking lot all the time. The other issue is at the rear here, which the ride height is much, much better on, but there is a rear sway bar on this and it has aftermarket end links. Those aftermarket end links have heim joints and you can hear them pretty regularly when you're driving down the road and you hit some bumps. So again, not a huge issue, but whoever had this car before with their, you know, kind of, I guess, track focused modifications on the car, they actually added that on there and as far as a daily driver goes it's just not needed I spent like 30 hours in this car over a couple days and it was enough to kind of drive me crazy so we're gonna be go ahead switching that back probably just put a stock sway bar and end links back on this thing and that should solve that issue Now for the grand finale, we're going to talk about the finances involved with this particular project. I know a lot of people tune in and watch these entire rebuild series and find the finances behind it maybe the most interesting part. Some people like to keep tabs on the different car markets that we rebuild cars within. Others are maybe in that market looking for a similar vehicle and still others just find it genuinely intriguing to know the finances behind some of these rebuild projects. Now, my partner on this project, eBay Motors, didn't necessarily want me to focus on the thousands of dollars that I saved by buying parts through their platform versus going the dealership route. Basically, the philosophy that you don't have to put down your competition in order to elevate the image of your own brand. So instead, we focused on the massive inventory on eBay Motors, more than 122 million parts and accessories listings, the eBay guaranteed fit and the protections that that offers. Simply put the vehicle in that you are driving in the My Garage feature. It'll show you listings that match up to your vehicle for some reason there's an issue you as the buyer are not responsible for the return shipping on the item and then also the tire installation tool which allows you to ship your tires directly to a local installer that you trust that way you don't have to play middleman getting your wheels and tires over to the installation so i didn't keep a running total on this car down to the last dime of the finances involved but i do have a list of the big stuff to go over so you have an idea of what this rebuild cost the first one is the big one, and that was the cost of the car, which was $65,000. This car did have a buy it now. It ran at auction the week before and bid to somewhere around, I think, $55,000 but the company that was selling it had a reserve on it. With the buy it now at $65,000, I basically just couldn't let it go. It made too much sense for me as I explained in the first video. I thought that the repair would be easy and it turned out to be exactly what I thought. Now, with that $65,000, that is not the end of the initial cost. The car was in California, so we had to pay shipping and then the auction always gets their cut. So all in to get the car here, for the start of the first video, I had $71,500 into it. Next, we had to purchase all of the items to fix the car, which brings our parts total to a grand total of $16,500. Now, as I mentioned in the second video, the headlights is really the big part of that cost. 
the hood, the front bumper, the grill, really the big items are the majority of that expense. And then there were a bunch of other little things. And then also the front frame section, which I couldn't even get to the local dealership if I wanted to. So using eBay Motors was the way that I got this car repaired. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been able to be done the way that we did it. Now, the last item that I tallied up is $1,000 at the Audi dealership, which was getting the key, the key program, clearing the airbag light, and that oil change, which really rounded out the actual repairs themselves. And that brings the grand total to $89,000. Now, one of the key points is the few items that I took out of the car that I'm going to be able to sell. The seats being the big one, they are listed on eBay Motors right now for $7,000, and that's shipped anywhere in the U.S. Now, I've had a couple of local people that have expressed interest for right around 6,000 bucks, which is fine by me because then I don't have to go through the shipment, pay the insurance on the shipment. It's an expensive shipment just because of the size in order to protect them because they are very expensive seats and they are really not replaceable. They're not out there. So point being that that amount of money will allow me to at least cover the taxes, the tags on this car, and I won't have to pay that out of pocket. The roll bar already sold locally to a gentleman for $1,000. So I've recouped a little bit of money on this car already, and that's nice because it just makes the finances on this car that much more practical. Again, this is not a car that I bought intending to resell. I bought this planning on keeping it, and therefore I was okay being into this car for a little bit more money than if I was reselling it is where I would want to be comfortable. This car, if I listed it for $90,000, I think that it would sell pretty quickly. When I say pretty quickly, I mean within 24 hours, pretty quickly. With the modifications on it, the low mileage, what it is being a facelifted Gen 1 with being a V10 Plus trim, this, if it was a clean title car, would be probably $130,000 all day long so in my eyes i'm not upside down in the car and i saved myself forty thousand dollars so i got an awesome rebuild series and a car of my dreams for a whole lot less money than i was originally thinking so really it's a no-brainer why i went ahead and picked this thing up and i'm glad it just worked out as i was thinking now i have some massive thank yous to send out to all the viewers that tune in. This is just one of the many projects that we have going on, and we love the support that you guys show. Very, very glad that you enjoy the videos that we put out. It allows us to keep doing these things that make us happy, rebuild these cars that otherwise we probably wouldn't be able to do. Again, a massive thank you to my partner on this project, eBay Motors. I've mentioned it several times, but Lisey Parts has been a seller on eBay Motors for more than a decade. So to be able to have them involved in some of the rebuild processes is just very, very special because we are working with them literally on a daily basis to provide the people pretty much all over the world with the highest quality used parts that we possibly can for these sports cars that we mess with. So again, a massive thank you to just everybody involved on this. I'm looking forward to the few changes that I need to make on the car over the winter. If you have any suggestions for maybe a good street coilover setup, I'm open open to suggestions as far as that goes and then also if there's any events over the winter um, being racing events or just local kind of cars and coffee car get togethers in the area and you think it might be cool if we go ahead and bring this or one of the other cars out to let us know we're getting close to that time here in Maryland where we really can't do much for like three months so if there's an event somewhere around the country that you'd like to see us come to definitely let us know and again local car show type stuff meetups if there's something going on over the next couple weeks before it gets too cold, let me know. We would love to come out. I would love to show this thing off to as many different people as I can in person before it gets tucked away for the winter if nothing's going on. So I'm going to give one last massive thank you to everybody tuning into these videos. We got some cool, fun projects coming down the pipeline. This one, though, is finally complete. So thank you again for tuning in, and we will see you in the next video.